Good afternoon, everyone. Um, first of all, uh, I hope all of you are safe and doing well with your families. And you know, amongst this uh, trying times. Uh, let me introduce myself. My name is Jeffrey. I'm the uh, product manager for uh, heavy duty tools for Hilti India. And uh, I would like to welcome each one of you to this webinar session on how to improve health and safety and productivity by choosing the right uh, power tool as well as insert. So this webinar will be scheduled for an hour. Uh, and um, before we start that, let me give you a quick guide to the uh, webinar platform, platform itself. Uh, all of you will be able to see a side panel and uh, over there, uh, you have a few controls, uh, you know, any message from us, you will be able to see. And if you want to maximize or minimize the screen, you can. And if you have any specific questions at any point in time, uh, please drop it in the section as mentioned. And uh, we will try to address it uh, then and there. If uh, we are not able to address it towards the end, the last five minutes, we, we have allocated for Q&A, where we will take your questions. If still we are not able to answer, we will revert, revert back uh, to your questions eventually. Perfect. With that, let's uh, get into the agenda for today's uh, session. Uh, so we will talk about health, safety, and productivity as a topic, um, where we are today as an industry, and why is it important for us as a topic, why we need to focus on the same. And then we will get into the part where how Hilti as a company can help, help you in this journey. Uh, specifically there, uh, I, will be, I will be covering how tool ergonomics uh, and tool safety are critical part of uh, contributing to the cause. And also you will see how does control uh, is a problem and how we can uh, eliminate that in our job sites. And finally, towards the end, as I previously mentioned, we'll have a Q&A session to take your questions if there is any. So for us as construction companies, um, you know, to be successful, there are four main uh, key elements, right? We talk about, we'll, uh, we have to be productive, we'll have to ensure quality, safety as well as we need to have a skilled labor right these are four fundamental elements which will ensure we are successful in uh, what we do but we face a lot of challenges towards these uh, you know requirements specifically if i talk about we have always uh, we always run against the clock we have significant time pressure and uh, project schedules get tighter and as a result uh, you know we always run against the clock and uh, Sometimes we grapple with the challenge of uh, poor installation quality. Sometimes the installation procedures are complex and uh, end of the day, these are executed by uh, you know, unskilled labor in a lot of times. And this eventually causes to uh, you know, the installation quality being compromised when we complete the job sites. And another challenge which we face today is with respect to the working conditions because uh, construction uh, site is uh, not a straightforward uh, a location there you will find different activities uh, running parallelly which will cause a lot of dust to be generated and usually uh, this becomes a hazard for many of the workers who are uh, working there as well as for us who are part of the job sites as well and of course the last challenge which we face day in and day out is a lack of skilled labor you know we have laborers coming in from rural parts who are not uh, educated and who are illiterate and uh, the challenge of getting the work done through them in an effective way uh, is something which we you know grapple with each and every time each and every day uh, in our job sites right so with these challenges uh, in front of us we will see how we can adopt uh, best practices in safety uh, that will actually positively contribute to each of these challenges uh, so that is the entire webinar all about how we can use different safety practices to address these challenges. You know, before we go any further, it is important for us to understand why do, uh, you know, we have unsafe working conditions in a job site. Now, what, what are the fundamental reasons why workers as well take a lot of risks? If you see, you know, one of the main reasons why workers do that is they have been doing it for a long period and nothing has ever happened to me. And if you ask them, uh, they will say, I know what I'm doing. Uh, the job needs to be done. 
and uh, this is the easiest and fastest way of doing it and these are all the uh, different reasons which uh, we come up with and uh, you know these are all the reasons why we are willing to take more risk you know this being one side yes uh, workers take a lot of risk having said that they eventually do all of that because we allow them to do that at various stages even though we have a set of uh, safety measures in place sometimes against the challenges what i previously mentioned when we run against the clock uh, we need to ensure the job getting done sometimes these safety measures are compromised and uh, you know it is when we take safety as a, a topic as as a way of life rather than as a compliance topic that we will truly adhere to the uh, you know fundamentals and ensure our workplaces are much more safer to operate in um, before we proceed further i would um, like to make a quick poll right now uh, you know there you will be able to see a question on your screen at this point in time it is just a straightforward question uh, i encourage each one of you to participate in it okay we have the votings uh, coming in we will possibly wait for another uh, 20 to 30 seconds before we proceed okay maybe the last 5 seconds maybe okay i think uh, we can close the uh, poll at this point in time we have more than 75% of the uh, attendees responding to this and uh, let me quickly share with you what the entire group thinks right i hope you can see the results right now on your screen a uh, vast majority of you think that uh, you know construction is uh, one of the uh, areas where you find a lot of fatalities as a sector followed by mining i will give the answer to this in a bit uh, as we proceed uh, further on in the presentation i hope you can see my screen again yeah before we proceed let's uh, take a look at the current construction construction safety in india uh, what you see right now is um, a graph which shows the number of fatal accidents in each work trade of construction right as you can see uh, the maximum number of fatalities happen um, you know when people work at heights or uh, you know people work with uh, electric lines primarily uh, the number of fatal accidents are significantly higher but all in all as uh, as construction industry the number of fatalities which we are talking about is roughly 9.5 um, for every 100000 full time employees right but, uh, this is a, a mix of a few countries when it comes to data but the data which i'm going to show you right now will possibly come as a surprise to you there are in fact 38 fatalities in india in the construction industry every day you know the industry is as such uh, largely unorganized uh, we have uh, laborers coming in from very rural parts and all of this contributes to a significant number of fatalities in india specifically in the construction side and uh, if you think about the fatalities being so high and you can imagine the number of uh, you know near misses near miss cases and the number of hazards which can come up in a job site so if i talk about the uh, causes for main major causes for non fatal injuries uh, in job sites the top two if i specifically uh, going to pick up there uh, that is going to be contact with objects right any anything to do with an electricity line primarily attributes to a lot of safety problems also you will find uh, the second biggest reason why uh, there are a lot of non fatal injuries in the job site is because of over exertion and uh, because of bodily reaction 
right? So these two are uh, you know points which we will have to keep in mind. So it is not just about the fatalities, but also about the close calls as well as the non-fatal injuries which our uh, you know employees go through on a daily basis, and we we should try to fix uh, you know these. Uh, you know, uh, reasons for injuries so that we make the uh, job site much more safer for the employees. Okay, safety is on one side. Yes, there is a lot of scope for improvement when it comes to the construction sector in India. But how are we doing on the productivity side? But um, when it comes to productivity, there also uh, we do not have a, a very good picture, specifically when it comes to construction. Uh, as you can see from this graph, um, the graph actually shows the uh, output, um, you know, measured from each of the industry, specifically manufacturing, construction, and the total economy. As you can see, construction lags uh, manufacturing as an industry and also the total economy. One of the main reasons why uh, construction over the last 20 years has not significant strides um, in uh, productivity primarily is because of uh, you know we not adopting to uh, technology as a new way of improving productivity and we also stick to traditional methods of executing projects which as well contributes negatively to productivity improvement uh, the reason why manufacturing has made huge strides is they have uh, you know picked up the uh, automation technology which has helped their costs but of course we have our own uh, sets of challenges but still there is a big scope of improvement when it comes to uh, productivity as well, which can be significantly improved in our uh, industry. But all is not bad. We, we also see that the topics of safety and driving productivity through safety has risen in our industry significantly. And we also have uh, a lot of players in the market who invest a lot in this topic and they ensure that um, you know the safety standards are extremely high within their job sites as well as within their companies and a lot of um, you know investment and effort goes in that direction and as a result yes uh, they are uh, market leaders and they are also having benchmark uh, you know footprint across the world um, yes it is a legal mandate for us to provide a safe working location for our uh, employees but um, still, it is not about compliance, you know, it is not about, uh, you know, enforcing what is there in the legal side. It is more of a, a mindset topic where co companies have started, uh, you know, improving their safety measures across the job site. Uh, the only major change which we require as an industry is we should stop thinking of safety as a cost and we should think of it as an investment. Yes. Uh, you know, there is going to be an investment up front, but that investment is going to ensure that my job site is not going to be stopped because of any major uh, issue and eventually it will pay off over its time. So that is the idea which we want to uh, put in front of the uh, team here. And before we proceed further, let us see what are the different elements of safety, right? Of course, the first part is, um, which assures job site safety, you know, forms uh, your training. Uh, initially, for whenever an employee gets onboarded or any visitor comes in, we ensure that they go through a rigorous safety training where they are educated as to what needs to be done, the do's and don'ts, and so on and so forth. We ensure uh, safety trainings are done. We also use clear signages. We uh, ensure security points. We ensure exit entry points so that uh, chaos is minimized and as well as, uh, uh, you know, uh, safety improves as a result. PPE has become a norm in the industry. Uh, pretty much most of the job sites and customers have adopted uh, to PPE as a next nature. And, you know, this goes without mention. And we also have implemented uh, ways and means of handling materials as well as storage in an effective way so that it also does not lead to any uh, safety hazard in a job site. Yeah, these are the obvious steps which we do. But can we do more? That's the question in front of us. You know, can we build our businesses in a way that it intrinsically includes the safety element, you know, your everyday work, you know, how you can ensure, uh, you know, safety is inbuilt into the system so that it doesn't, uh, the workers don't have to be trained on it and it becomes a second nature to your organization. 
right? That is the way you can mitigate the risk across the chain. I will tell you the reason why in a bit, but this becomes especially critical and this is something that you can easily implement by the adoption of new technology by ensuring the right safety standards are met, especially on your tools, tackles and equipments, because that will make a significant impact on the overall safety levels in your job site. And we are here because we can significantly contribute to power tools usage because a better use of power tools directly contributes to the intrinsic safety of the organization and it significantly improves uh, the num uh, you know improves uh, or rather reduces the number of hazards which your employees can face in a job site right so with that in mind a question to all of you right uh, just to reflect upon usually when i talk about power tools um, do we really look for a quality mark before i make the purchase you know, when you're going to get an equipment for your home, the first thing you look for is a quality standard, such as maybe ISI, you know, just to ensure, yes, this has been vetted by an organization. And now I can buy it with confidence that, yes, I can proceed with this to give you the peace of mind. But do we do the same uh, when we place uh, order for uh, power tool? The reason being, we procure power tools from stage one of the job site till the end stage, from excavation to finishing, we use power tools uh, during the different stages. We purchase a lot, but do we ensure it is up to a, sta a safety standard? To help us with this, um, you know, uh, as a reference, we can always use the CE as a, um, you know, benchmark or a quality standard, which helps you make that decision. Yes, uh, the tool which I am buying is safe and it is in accordance with, uh, you know, certain testing and norms. Uh, the reason why we do this is currently we do not have any specific testing uh, standards uh, in India when I talk about power tools and uh, uh, as a best practices, as a best practice, it will be better uh, if we can go ahead with the CE nomenclature and that will help us with the uh, decision of buying a purchase, uh, power tool. And uh, in the market today, uh, we get a lot of uh, Chinese, uh, you know, players, a lot of Chinese products also in the market. Uh, they play it uh, pretty uh, cleverly. They also write CE on their tools, but in the fine print, they mention it as China export. So we have to be wary of, uh, you know, such counterfeits and just take the right decision and what is good for our organization. Um, so what does a CE uh, certification mean? It actually corresponds to a lot of third party testing done on different headers, primarily on the safety side, on the health side, as well as the environmental side. Right? Uh, we have uh, third party testings, we have multiple directives, the European directives, uh, which the tools will have to undergo to get a CE certification. You know, when it comes to the health side, you know, in no hazardous substances are used for the manufacturing of the tool, that assurance you get. And also when it comes to the environmental side, you know, with respect to noise, you have a directive, with respect to the battery, you have a directive, and also with respect to uh, the frequency of waves, specifically on our scanner equipment, we have directives to it. So end of the day, a product from a quality manufacturer will ensure that the tool is safe and it has been uh, vetted by an organization and uh, on different aspects. So with that peace of mind, you will be able to take it forward. But it's okay that we have certain, um, you know, approvals in place, but does that mean uh, we can completely eliminate hazards in a job site? You know, I've given my team the best tool, uh, you know, it has a CE mark. So does that mean everything is going to be okay in a job site? On that regard, um, before we proceed, I will give you a very interesting fact. For every fatality, we have it on the job site. You know, uh, the graph, I am talking about the graph on the right hand side. For every fatality uh, which we see on the job site, uh, there are 30 major injuries which happen and 300 recordable injuries which happen. So all in all, only these uh, incidents are recorded because uh, none of the other uh, incidents are recorded. Only these are the visible issues in the job site. But unfortunately, uh, the base of the triangle is much uh, bigger, right? Uh, we have a lot of cases of near misses where, uh, you know, near misses or there have been a lot of cases where first aid has to be administered. And 
there are almost for every fatality there are 30000 unsafe conditions or unsafe practices which goes on in a job site which will, if we don't fix these this will eventually become a fatality uh, if we are not acting on it right now right and one of the major reasons through which you can fix these hazards and near misses is to having a tool which is ergonomically better right um, specifically with power tools um, you know there are certain aspects which we will have to consider when it comes to the ergonomic side uh, such as you know the amount of vibration in it the amount of noise it produces and how much force and effort is required from the laborer side to ensure the job is getting done right these are small aspects but this will eventually contribute to uh, the worker uh, using the tool for a much longer time comfortably and if he is going to have a very neutral position he'll be comfortable using the tool and his productivity over the day will be significantly better right and overall as um, you know um, a company you will be able to fix small gaps where you can eliminate the issue of safety completely within your job site at this point i would also want to discuss a very interesting study from the german uh, construction association so what you see on the screen on the right hand side here is um, they have actually compared the workload which a laborer receives from, for different work trades maybe like, let me take a moment in explaining one if we talk about uh, say road construction a uh, employee working in the road construction actually will face a lot of workload by carrying or lifting objects uh, the items marked in red specifically what i'm talking about he will experience workload because of squatting or kneeling and also because of vibration be it hand arm or even the full body vibration he will face a lot of stress because of that so it is a glimpse into where uh, manufacturers look into as to depending upon the tool what we manufacture uh, we take into consideration what are the stress points and if you know the stress points you can build a system to avoid it and eventually make the tool much more easier and comfortable for the uh, laborer to use it right and we have you know brought the stress stress factors the entire chart on the right hand side has been summarized to what you see on the left right we we'll, where the maximum reds are happening you know we we'll have to focus on the body posture you know the way in which the uh, laborer is using the tool that is something extremely important and also high uh, focus has to go into the amount of force that the laborer has to exert to complete that task and also uh, sufficient focus has to go into the vibration side you know how much vibration the worker experiences it so based on these aspect if you build a tool it will be much more comfortable and the laborers can use it for much longer time so with that i will tell you how we as a company have evolved over the time and it is no longer just about making a hole right 50 years back the only requirement was to uh, make a hole for a rebar and we move on but now the same hole has to be made at the quickest possible time with the least possible effort and at an extremely safe as well it should be extremely safe and also it has to be uh, you know uh, when it comes to um, ergonomics as well it has to be there and also lesser vibration so all in all it is not just about making the hole there are a whole lot of other aspects which we will have to consider so that the entire chain becomes much more productive and end of the day you as contractors you as companies uh, who has a requirement of possibly drilling uh, several thousand holes in a job site do it as a much at a much quicker pace as well as it saves money for you eventually uh, that is the whole objective right and that is the evolution which hilti has gone through as well over uh, you know the last 60 70 years and that's exactly what we are here to share it, share with you as well and uh, you know now let me talk uh talk you through certain you know key elements of our tools uh, which are extremely important when it comes to driving safety as well as the ergonomics of the uh, machine itself you know if you talk about a single uh, you know hammer drilling system what you see on the screen right now it is a um, uh, e30a a cordless ha hammer drilling machine which has the features of active torque control 
it has feature of active vibration reduction it has a feature for safe set you know a new technology through which uh, you can have a hollow drill bit and a vacuum cleaner to ensure zero dust is there on the job place and i will take you through each and every feature what we have in our tools and how it can positively impact your uh, working style when i first when i start with active vibration reduction right one of the major issues which we see with a lot of construction uh, workers is a condition known as vibration white finger or hvs right um it is called as hand arm vibration syndrome so what happens is uh, as part of this uh, disease the tips get uh, whiter and the worker undergoes a lot of pain and this mainly happens because of prolonged exposure to vibrations especially you know vibrations when operating a hand tool and over time this sets in and eventually it becomes an extremely uh, painful task and this is a high safe uh, you know high risk safety hazard right uh, and a lot of our um, you know tools come with this feature called as active vibration reduction with an ultimate objective of reducing the amount of vibration that is getting transferred to the uh, user uh, let me quickly show you how this entire uh, you know activity works so as you can see from this uh, you know small uh, video which is going on in your screen in a normal combi hammer the vibration is transferred to the user 100% but when it comes to a hildi machine there is a sub chassis system wherein all the uh, running parts are isolated from the body through uh, you know uh, you know mechanical springs as well as a sub chassis system which will ensure the vibration is minimal to the user right through this over a period of time you can ensure you know higher worker comfortability and this again positively impacts uh, the productivity part another feature which uh, is there on our tools is called as active torque control so essentially what this means is whenever uh, you are drilling uh, through a uh, base material let's say concrete with you know reinforced concrete and if the uh, drill bit hits a rebar there will be a kickback on the tool immediately and uh, you know depending upon the size of the hole and the kickback a lot of times workers uh, will have injuries in their wrist Uh, up to uh, you know some twists to fracture you know these are common place in job sites you know the kickback resulting because of you know a base material um, impediment so i will tell you how our feature of active torque control will completely eliminate this problem at all when it comes to the job site as you may see uh, in the video uh, right now uh, any uh, general combi hammer when it st gets stuck in the base material you will be able to see there is a very quick uh, swivel of the tool and this the worker unsuspecting worker will have a huge issue when he has this but with our hilti's ac abc technology active torque control what happens is the um, electrical unit and the gearing unit will be disengaged as you can see here you know the moment it disengages automatically uh, you know uh, the power will be cut off and as a result no kickback will be uh, transferred to the uh, worker again a peace of mind another safety feature to ensure that everything is okay in the job site few other uh, topics which we will uh, you know cover to to ensure that proper ergonomics as well as safe uh, safety is covered are with respect to the weight of the tool our tools are designed in such a way that keeping in mind the center of gravity and so that the user can hold the tool for prolonged duration and especially for the smaller power tools we keep it uh, you know one man or one hand operation right so uh, over a longer period a number of fastenings over the day the worker can use it comfortably and another feature which we have on our tools is called as the full finger trigger this is essentially to ensure the trigger this on off button or the trigger will not be completely engaged till the time at least two fingers are there on the switch you know sometimes in certain power tools when you pick it up only it will automatically start running because even with a single finger the tool will get switched on but this can cause certain uh, safety has hazards in a job site just to prevent that you will need to put on at least two fingers on the safety uh, on the start switch to ensure the uh, tool is getting switched on 
and we have another uh, when we talk about switch we have another uh, safety feature called as the dead man switches essentially these are uh, safety levers which pops up in front of the uh, on off switch and this will prevent uh, the tool from switching on accidentally when the laborer picks it up especially these are there on the uh, saws as well as the grinders where the blades run at extremely high uh, rpm and this can cause serious uh, injuries to workers at a job site and uh, the purpose of this deadman switch without pressing that deadman switch you are on off uh, but a switch will not get initiated just as an additional safety feature to ensure um, you know complete protection uh, you know quickly i will touch upon you know other safety features as well on our um, uh, our tools we have an uh, feature called as the re restart safety essentially when there is a power interruption uh, you know possibly the tool might be on before the power went off and when it comes back the tool will not switch on automatically um, and if you want to switch it on you will have to first switch off the tool and then restart it then only uh, the tool will switch on you know additional safety feature and also a lot, most of our power tools come with a double insulation um, you know protection essentially this is to separate the all the el live electrical parts from the user so there are several layers of insulation between the uh, you know running uh, live parts as well as the user so that in case of any voltage spikes or any uh, fluctuation in current that the eventually does not get uh, you know passed on to the operator and there is no issue of uh, you know electrical shock or anything of that sort similarly for our, our diamond coring tools we have a technology known as prcd uh, which again works on the pretty similar concept and it also uh, cuts down any spikes in voltage to ensure safety of the operator we have seen certain features but we also come up with certain safety innovations itself one of the innovations uh, which we have brought into the market is a complete uh, solution of cordless uh, one of the key issue which you find in a jo uh, job site when it comes to safety side of things is you know electrical cable cables running for several hundred meters within the job site one yes adding to the cost but more importantly it's a safety hassle workers getting tripped over and other safety issues related to it um, with the cordless concept you can ensure that um, you know you have a, a portable tool with the same uh, power as well as the same performance at uh, a tip of your hand and not just for one application for most of the application that you as contractors you do it in a job site we have a solution for it and the best part is you know each of our cordless tool comes with uh, all the safety features which we just discussed such as the full hand triggers it is a very well balanced tool to enable one man operations um, operation it has excellent uh, power to weight ratio it also has the uh, safety locks as well and abr and of course side handle to ensure um, better control right so if you want to take safety to the next level you can adopt uh, the entire innovation of cordless as one go to ensure uh, you know better safety within your uh, job sites one of the key elements uh, which we saw as a feature in the t30 earlier was safe set the ultimate objective of safe, safe set is to ensure uh, you know a dustless drilling which is something uh, not very common in the industry whenever we drill there is a lot of dust which is generated but the whole objective of bringing such an innovation uh, here is to ensure every time we drill there is no requirement of cleaning which forms an essential part of uh, you know installing a rebar as we go forward let me show you a quick video as to how it works and uh, during that i will let me explain the same So let's assume uh, this is a normal drilling which you are doing for a rebarring application. You drill, and of course there is a lot of dust generated. And before putting in the chemical, you will have to clean the hole. When you go for a Hilti safe set uh, technology with a hollow drill bit, all you have to do is drill. Currently, it is drilling at the same time it is removing the dust. So two activities are happening right now. You know, cleaning as well as drilling. Both of them are happening simultaneously, and as a result. Uh, you know no dust in the job site while you are drilling at the same time no requirement of cleaning the hole these two are ensured because of this uh, technology of safe set 
yes uh, there is no dust no cleaning but these are not the uh, two benefits alone which comes out of it as you can see um, every rebarring it is a mandatory thing to clean the hole and what you see on the right hand side is a comparison between the traditional method of doing it you know the normal uh, cleaning with the normal cleaning and the new way of doing it with our safe set system there is a significant reduction in the cleaning time as well you know the drilling speed is also significantly improved and your cleaning time is uh, uh, zero so this overall reduces the time which you take to finish a rebar a rebarring application overall for every application that that you might have like slab extension or column extension any application that you might have the installation time of it will be significantly reduced plus no dust and end of the time uh, end of the day you will also have the benefit of a better safety because every time uh, it is a 100% clean hole and all the approvals are there in place uh, just for clean holes and it will ensure a perfect installation every time it's a foolproof system which you can have till now what we have seen is uh, you know different product features which are which are available how ergonomics can contribute positively to safety and how different innovations such as cordless and safe set can significantly contribute to the overall safety of your job site another important as aspect which we will have to get into is dust right there is no uh, hiding the fact that it is a burning topic in india as well when it comes to uh, the topic of pollution there have been several months of uh, jobs job site shutdowns that we have experienced say for example in delhi and it is a ticking time bomb and it is a real issue which uh, is going on in the job site and we and construction sites also significantly contribute to dust in the society as well so we can see uh, in what we will see in the subsequent slides is how um, you know we can uh, reduce the entire uh, contribution of dust and how you can uh, use better technologies to ensure uh, you know the entire system works right i would want to take your attention to ppe first you know 20 years back if i um, if you look at it ppes was not a common place uh, you know item Uh, you know it was again not adopted across the industry and it was uh, only in isolated pockets but over the last 20 years now we have come to a stage that you know ppe is a mandatory thing everybody has to do and it's like the basic fundamental hygiene which we ensure before getting into a job site and what we foresee as a company as well is going forward the dust control as well will become an integral part of every job site and that will become the standard topic and it's the way we will do business going forward now right now it is not there but as uh, thought leaders we will have to think in those direction how we can improve the industry to ensure that it is dustless and you know contribute positively to the society before getting into more details let's first understand how dust can be a health hazard and how it can be a productivity killer for us first of all let's uh, figure out from where the dust comes out you know we do different applications right from excavation to finishing uh, different applications such as drilling chiseling uh, slitting grinding and all these generates uh, tons of dust uh, you know over the entire uh, job site duration and uh, you know tons of silica and quartz are getting released into the air and this will definitely have a health effect not only on the laborers yes the laborers of course because they are doing it first hand but also as we you know professional who who are in the job sites as well and this will have an immediate short term impact uh, of visibility you know when, when i talk about the challenges which a laborer might face you know visibility will be a real, real concern especially when you see concrete grinding happening it is going to significantly affect the visibility the concentration will definitely reduce and as a result we are exposing him to a higher risk of getting injured and of course a prolonged exposure to dust will lead to respiratory diseases uh, silicosis copd and other uh, you know health issues will be common place if we don't address this at the right moment and as i mentioned right this is not just the laborers you know this is going to have an impact on each and every one who is going to be there in the job site 
and just to give you a, a sense of you know um, how the, this dust can impact us what you see on the right side is the time taken by a dust particle to settle down on the ground um, from a, a height of one meter you know this the biggest particles of 50 micro, uh, micrometer usually settles down in 10 seconds but as you as the particle gets smaller the time duration significantly increases so maybe you do not see the particles uh, you do not visibly see them but it is still there in the job site and we spend most of the time there end of the day that is going to have an adverse impact on us as well uh, over a prolonged period and um, this is a topic where we will have to focus maximum to ensure better safety a lot of companies are already cognizant of uh, you know this problem and a lot of measures are already being taken by uh, several companies um, and some of the measures as you can see on the screen right now uh, you know people deploy air cleaners to ensure that the um, you know air is clean in the working environment you know a few others use dust suppression systems primarily uh, water sprayers just to settle down the uh, you know smaller uh, dust particles floating in the air and of course they also provide uh, you know ppes to ensure uh, ppes including masks as well to ensure dust doesn't uh, get into the user's uh, respiratory system but yes uh, these are certain um, you know um, efforts from our side but it is more to do with the uh, so um, you know reactive side so called reactive side but is it possible to prevent it at the time the dust is created you know that will ensure the spread is minimized and the overall effect that that, that the dust can have uh, will be significantly reduced so for that hilti has a wide range of options uh, you know through which you can completely eliminate dust in a job site you know we have a solution uh, wherein you know the dust uh, removal system is in, in built in the tool so that whenever you do a drilling the dust is automatically collected in the dust collector and you know it just it doesn't cause any uh, concern to the user another way we address this is uh, you know through external dust removal systems that is essentially uh, like a you know with the attachment of a vacuum cleaner so at the point of generation we use a vacuum cleaner to absorb the dust so that we can limit the spread of it and also we have other uh, bed drilling options uh, so uh, we have the water management systems as well to ensure the dust is uh, not allowed to spread in the job site and we can also think about new ways of fastening not, you know fastening need not be always with the help of drilling so we are coming up with technologies uh, such as direct fastening which doesn't call uh, for you to drill a hole to fasten something so we are coming up with uh, certain other technologies such as um, you know the bx3 the the tool which you see right now on your screen you know these technology will ensure that uh, you know no holes are uh, need to be drilled in the uh, specific requirement so let's see how this dust removal system how efficient this dust removal system can be uh, possibly let's do it with one example let's say uh, we will have to do an application of uh, slitting a cable channel you know specifically in the base material of the brick or concrete and it's an one hour operation to do it in the traditional method for one hour the amount of dust which will be generated will be close to 9.2 kilograms and if you use hilti's dust removal system the same application you will be generating only 120 grams of uh, you know dust over the same one hour period you know with the significant reduction in the dust uh, of course the user will feel much more comfortable uh, much more productive and the amount of inhalable dust also is significantly reduced so that you know through this you uh, improve the safety of the job site as a whole yes uh, we have uh, discussed about different safety features uh, we've talked about ergonomics we've talked about talked about innovation such as cordless we've also covered you know how uh, reducing dust can positively impact your uh, job site safety but really as a company we are also getting into the technology domain as to how we can leverage technology uh, to build better tools, tools which can speak to us and tools which can help us take better decisions so that overall uh, the 
usage experience as well as the safety points are addressed. Say for example, uh, most of the tools of our tools come with a technology of near field communication, uh, wherein you can use your mobile phone to scan the tool and uh, you know with the help of an application called as Healthy Connect and through that you will be able to see all the data of the tool with respect to usage time uh, for certain tools and repair history and other information as well. And through this specific application, you will also be able to troubleshoot. Essentially, you will be able to um, get information as to what is wrong with the tool. You know, a quick scan, it will tell you, uh, you know, what the issue could be. And you can quickly do a diagnostics at the job site to ensure, you know, the tool is, uh, uh, you know, fixed quickly and, uh, you know, work continues in your job site. So this is another innovation through which we ensure both safety so that the issues are fixed then and there without you know getting into more complex uh, issues and uh, we use the power of technology to do that so overall we when we started out with the presentation we saw four major challenges you know in every construction job site we see the challenge of uh, you know time pressure we see the challenge of installation quality and we see the challenge of uh, the difficult working condition with a lot of dust and of course, uh, the lack of skilled labor within the job site, right? What we have seen in this discussion is, um, you know, the different solution which we bring to the table through which these challenges can be addressed. When it uh, comes to uh, being the issue of time pressure, we give you solutions which can make you much more productive, much more faster. Uh, the example of safe set, again, you know, a dustless drilling with no cleaning required, this enables you to finish your work faster and within the stipulated budget as well. And the same goes for the installation quality. We try to build foolproof systems, which eventually uh, can be operated by even an unskilled person at the same time, achieving the right level of results, which you expect out of the job site. You know, so the installation quality is never compromised in all of the, uh, you know, features and the uh, additional features that we discussed in the presentation. And we, in an effort to improve the working condition where you currently are, we are proposing the solution of dustless, um, you know, through various attachments, be it uh, inbuilt attachment on the tool or exterior uh, attachments. Our effort is to ensure minimal dust is generated and, uh, you know, the, the generated dust is uh, completely compressed and it doesn't get uh, spread within the job site. So better working condition can be ensured with the help of dustless. And when it comes to uh, the skilling of your labor, there as well, Hilti uh, traditionally has been supporting you, um, you know, with, come by uh, periodic training of your uh, laborers when it comes to power tool safety. And uh, we also support in any other specific uh, requirement that may, you may have when it comes to the safety side of things. So all in all, um, you know, our endeavor is to ensure through our safety features on the tools as well as on the inserts, we try to address the challenges which you face as a company. And we are here to support you to ensure you as well run a safe as well as a profitable business. So uh, you will be able to find a lot of the resources on uh, what we discussed right now. You can uh, find more information on this on the website uh, hilti.in, uh, more information on the products. Uh, if you want more details to, uh, of the products as well as a demo to be executed in your job site, you can always get in touch with your Hilti account manager. And if you have any uh, questions, you also can reach out to uh, ask.hilti.in. But before that, um, we can take some questions um, before we close the session on uh, close the webinar. And uh, Sharon, uh, any specific questions that uh, you've been addressing? Yeah, Jeffrey, I've taken care of quite a few questions. There is one question, which is uh, a few questions which is still okay, left unanswered. I'm just looking I through the questions. You. Uh, let me try to answer a few. So one of the questions is the difference of running life between a hollow tilbit and a normal uh, Carbide head a little bit. Uh, 
Okay, um, there is a question from Mr. Karthik. Um, what will be the cost comparison to the normal one? Um, sir, these, it depends on the specific tool. It depends on the specific application that we are discussing. Um, you know, for more details, always reach out to us. Uh, we will come to your specific job site. We will do a demonstration of the tool. And once you get an uh, idea of the same, we will do, uh, you know, the necessary cost comparison. Of course, we'll give you a proposal there. You know, it is very difficult to uh, give you a cost uh, comparison, you know, without a specific uh, tool in uh, discussion. Okay, I'm just scrolling through the questions. Just allow me a minute. Okay, there is a question from Mr. Manish Gupta on vacuum option. Is it uh, available? Is it is practically possible where the number of holes are more and at different locations? So the question is, you know, with the option of the dustless, right? The, the vacuum cleaner, how easy will it be? Uh, sir, it's, uh, you know, the concern what you share is valid. You know, this is, again, a change topic, which we are taking it into the industry, where, of course, um, you know, for serial uh, drilling applications in a specific level, it will always be possible to uh, go with, uh, you know, a vacuum cleaner and insulation will be possible in one go. Possibly in certain pockets or sections within the job site, it might be uh, slightly cumbersome to go with the uh, vacuum cleaner system. But uh, the idea is to uh, start this change and uh, ensure we at least complete it in the major sections where we execute it. I hope that answers. Okay, there are some feedback that, uh, you know, the dust removal tool is good. I will take that. Okay, uh, with respect to the videos, a few of you have uh, asked regarding the videos which have been shared. Uh, the same, uh, most of the videos are available on YouTube as well, sir. Uh, post this, uh, you know, we can as well share the, uh, you know, webinar content as well, if you guys are interested in the same. So there is a question from uh, Ms. Bhageshri, in which construction environment mostly power tools are used? Um, Ma'am, uh, you know, it's power tools constitute right from the excavation side of things to superstructure, uh, to lintel, to ceiling, till uh, finishing and handover, till from stage one to stage end, uh, various power tools are used. Uh, right from breakers to coring machines to uh, you know uh, light duty tools like your hammer drilling machine your um, you know uh, screwdrivers there are several uh, tools which constitute every part of the uh, value chain and for all of this you will be able to get a very positive impact using healthy tools yes Okay, uh, there is a feedback from uh, Mr. Vivek uh, specifically on uh, the question is, uh, you know, healthy tools and machines are not available in the local markets and uh, there is no healthy office in Jamshedpur. Uh, we face a problem in getting it fast. Uh, sir, uh, as you rightly said, yes, we do not have an outlet specifically in Jamshedpur. But, uh, you know, what we have ensured is, um, you know, in terms of the forward delivery as well, we deliver it to you within three days. If it is not going to be a remote location in a city like Jamshedpur, within three days, you will get the material. So all uh, that is required is, uh, you know, just intimate us in advance and the material will reach you within three days from the uh, nearest dispatch center. Just sorry, just, just to add to that, uh, we have two account uh, representatives okay, in Jamshedpur uh, as well. From Mr. Okay, in touch with them for any kind of support related safety quality, safety or quality uh, certificate. Okay, if I understand the question right, uh, the question is: Is there any uh, skill training certificate which is issued uh, by Hilti? So the answer is uh, not at this stage, sir. Uh, we are in the process of uh, rolling out a very specific service for all of you. Uh, it is not available at uh, this stage, but yes, very soon we'll come back to you with a proposal on that.
Okay, uh, there is a question from Mr. Manish Gupta. Uh, we are working on a reduction of wastage of RE500 while uh, application. Uh, almost 20% material is getting wasted uh, because of application issue. That is a very valid concern, sir, what you mentioned. Um, um, what happens is typically while application of uh, any chemical, we tend to use the manual dispenser. The manual dispenser is when you don't have control of how much chemical is uh, being injected into the job site, in, into the specific hole. Uh, so we have uh, a solution for that. We have a cordless dispenser. Uh, which effectively controls the amount of chemical which goes into the hole. Because based on the rebar dia and the hole dia, we know precisely as to how much chemical is required inside the hole. And in that cordless dispenser, you can set the uh, you know volume in ml which is injected. So with that, you can ensure 100% uh, accuracy every time. And uh, this wastage, which you're mentioning of 20%, will be drastically reduced to possibly less than 5%. So I hope that answers your question, sir. OK, um, there is a question. We need uh, more videos on direct anchoring, especially on trace. Um, question from Mr. Jigar. Uh, sir, a lot of uh, the anchoring uh, data is available on our YouTube channel, Hinti India, as well as on our website. Um, my request is to go check it out once. If you're still not able to find, we can support you uh, separately as well on that. Uh, there is a question on the uh, life of hollow drill bits. Um, you know, that's a great question, sir. You know, uh, we saw the safe set te technology, how it can significantly improve your uh, productivity. When it comes to the life of it, um, it is significantly higher than any of the bits which you get in the market today. Uh, in terms of running meters, if I'm going to talk about for a uh, hollow drill bit, we are talking about 20 to 25 running meters. Uh, when you compare it with any of the local uh, drill bits, we are talking about maybe uh, 7 to 10. So it be outperform when it comes to the longevity of the drill bit as well. I hope that answered your question, Mr. Satish. Jeffrey, there is a question. Can you hear me? Um, OK, there is a question from Mr. Uh, Mohamed. Can you please uh, show me the drilling and cleaning process? Um, if you are mentioning to the one which I showed in the video, I will definitely show that once again. Yeah, so this is the regular, uh, you know, method of doing it where, you know, where the hole is drilled. And before you put in the chemical, you will have to clean the hole with the help of a, uh, you know, air pump. And that is where our technology comes in, where you can. Oh, yes, uh, Sharan. Yes, I can hear you now. Please go on. Yes, uh, so Mr. Mohamed, I... yeah, now I can hear you, Sharan, yes. Good. So the one of the questions is that uh, this uh, DR dust reduction system that you showed, can it be used in maintenance? DRs. Uh, okay. Can it be used in maintenance? I did not get that. Can it be used in maintenance activities to ensure a dustless environment there? Oh, definitely, sir. Of course. Uh, you know, if you are talking about uh, you know just cleaning the uh, specific area using that. Uh, the alloy is not recommended. Uh, you know the job can be done just using the vacuum cleaner as well. But uh, since there are filters, uh, you know inside the vacuum cleaner, that will not be recommended. And if we limit the purpose specifically to just drilling, it will be much much more useful. Yeah, Sharon. Any other questions? Uh, I am anyway scrolling through them. Okay, there was a question. Um, you know, how do you differentiate the CE logo, uh, you know, how the original one and the Chinese export, uh, what you mentioned? Uh, sir, it's, um, you know, kind of obvious. What happens is the spacing for uh, C and E is standard for, um, you know, the European norms. 
but when it comes to the china export ones usually the word letter <coughs> placed very close to each other and it becomes extremely obvious to see that c and e are very very close to each other they usually play with the spacing and it becomes pretty obvious when you see the tool uh, or the mark yourself Yes, yeah, sir. There is a question on the reliability of the power tools. So there is a comment from Mr. Santish that the power tools are really good and safe, but how is the reliability? Okay, uh, that's a great question, sir. Uh, at this outset, maybe uh, I will introduce one of the unique features which we have on our power tools uh, to give you the confidence of reliability. That is uh, a unique warranty which we call as the two one three warranty. Effectively, it meant uh, what two means is a two year no cost. So for two years from the date of purchase of the tool, we will ensure that your repair cost is zero. Uh, you know, what I mean by that is it is not a manufacturer's warranty, irrespective of however you use the tool. Um, you know, we will ensure that, uh, you know, including your spare parts, including your labor, everything is made zero for the first two years, right? Also, we give you a one month warranty on repair. Every time the tool comes for repair, we'll give you a one month warranty and uh, you know in certain uh, in all the metro cities we have a facility of three days or free uh, wherein you will get the tool after repair within three days and for tier one and tier two cities we have an option of five days or free so this is just to give you a quick glimpse as to the uh, overall service promises which we have and essentially we are able to offer these services just because of the confidence which we have in the tools and uh, this will ensure that uh, you know the longevity is in place and the tools are reliable and can be used for a longer duration than any other tool that is available in the market okay um maybe we will, in the interest of time we will take possibly two more questions and uh, we will um, you know try to address the remaining questions uh, you know offline as well separately to you guys is there vacuum cleaner available for breakers yes sir uh, we have separate attachment for it it, it comes as an accessory uh, which can be uh, quickly plugged into a breaker and you can experience the same dustless environment for breakers as well Okay, to take care of COVID, uh, whether you have any products, uh, a question from Mr. Sachin. Um, we do not have any specific solution, sir. Having said that, uh, if you are working in any of the essential services, um, industries like uh, pharma or uh, food industry, and you really need the material, and we can support you specifically there. But uh, no specific products for COVID, but definitely we can support you for any uh, requirement, and even at this stage, yes. Okay, maybe I will take one more question before uh, we close this session. Uh, Sharon, any other uh, repeated question that you found? Yeah, there are quite a few questions on uh, hollow versus solid drill bits. What are the advantages and disadvantages of each? Okay, uh, okay, maybe I will try to answer that. The major difference, as you can see from the product itself, of course, in a solid drill bit, the dust has to come out uh, through the hole, which will eventually, uh, you know, which is the regular way of working for us. When we you when you use the hollow drill bit, of course, uh, since it comes, uh, you can attach it to a vacuum cleaner. Dustless is ensured, right? That's with respect to the feature side. When we talk about the life side, um, you know, the hollow drill bit has pretty much a comparable life. To our basic range of inserts uh, so we have uh, two types of solid drill bits which we specifically for uh, the max connection and tools if i talk about uh, you know what we call as yx and y yx is like the ultimate insert where you will have a uh, running meter life of roughly 30 meters uh, that y insert which i mentioned will be roughly for uh, 20 meters so hollow drill bit will be comparable to our basic uh, uh, you know insert life 
Having said that, both of uh, these inserts will have a significant outperformance and outlast as compared to any of the drill bits which is available on the job site uh, in competition as well. Right. So you will be able to experience significant life improvement, be it a hollow drill bit or, or uh, solid drill bits. I hope that answers the question. Okay. Uh, maybe, sir, uh, thank you so much all uh, for participating uh, in this webinar. I think we have already extended by five minutes. Um, I appreciate your time. And my request would be after the session, uh, there will be a, a short feedback of uh, three questions. It will hardly take possibly less than a minute. I encourage you all to take that. Once again, I appreciate your time. And uh, for the questions which we have not answered, we will revert back to you on the same. Thank you so much for attending. Uh, stay safe and see you soon.